everyone, and welcome to week 26. And I'm very happy to say that we have reached our halfway mark in our year-long journey. So, woohoo! This week, I'm going to cover a topic that I actually get asked quite a lot when I'm on the road, and that's how to use the Thor step sequencer in a song. Now, there's a fair amount of patches in the factory sound bank that use the step sequencer, everything from arpeggiated notes to rhythmic patterns. And if you've tried to use these in some of your songs up to now, you may have found that it's a bit tricky. Well, there's a few tips and tricks I can give you to make the usage of those patches in your songs quite easy. If you've been trying to include a Thor patch in your song, which uses the step sequencer, you probably have come across a situation like this. When you press play on the transport, the sequence plays and keeps playing. If you only need that sequence to play for a specific section of a song, well, maybe you've resorted to muting or unmuting the mixer channel, or maybe you've tried automating the run mode parameter from off to repeat. While both of those methods might come close to achieving the desired result, there is a better way. Let's take this patch for example. I chose this patch because there are two things I want to control here. First, I want to be able to decide when the sequence starts or stops playing, and second, I want to be able to play the sequence on my controller and have it follow the root note or pitch of the key that I press. Let's begin with the start-stop assignment. There are a few ways I could go here. Either I could have it play the sequence when I press and hold a key on my controller keyboard, or I could use a toggle type button to start or stop the sequence. To play it from my controller, I need to select MIDI key gate as the source in the modulation matrix and step sequencer trig as the destination and give it an amount of 100. Now when I press any key on my controller, the step sequencer will play, but only for as long as I hold the key. So I can reset or re-trigger the sequence from the start by just releasing and replaying a note. Next, I want to be able to play the sequence and have it transpose and follow the note that I play on my controller. To do this, select MIDI key note as the source and step sequencer transpose as the destination with an amount of 100 again. See how it changes the pitch of the sequence as I play different notes? But as you can hear, we're not quite finished yet. Notice that I hear not only the step sequence, but also the note that I play on the controller. Well, we can disable that by just clicking off the MIDI button up here under the note trigger section at the top. And now we only hear the step sequencer and are able to transpose it. If the patch is something that is more rhythmic or atonal in nature, and we just need to start or stop it at certain points in the song, we could just use one of the two buttons of Thor to be the sequence start stop function and record that button being pressed as automation on the track. Let's use this patch as an example. To assign one of the buttons to start or stop the sequence, just select modifiers, button one or two as the source, amount of 100, and step sequencer trig as the destination. Since the buttons on Thor are of the toggle on off variety, meaning that they stay on when you push it once and then off when you push it again, the sequence will play as long as the button is illuminated. The sequence will always play from the beginning when you start it. If you're using a controller keyboard with remote support, you may already have these buttons mapped out to buttons on your keyboard. But if not, you can always just quickly assign them using the Edit Remote Override Edit Mode and the Learn from Control Surface Input function, which is accessed when you right-click on the parameter. To record this as part of the song, just record the automation on the Thor track like this. Using these tips, you should now be able to successfully use any Thor patch which uses the step sequencer in any of your songs. And if you have a look through the factory sound bank, you'll see there's quite a few of them that are in there. 
Well, that's it for this week. Again, I'm James Bernard from Propellerhead Software, and I will see you all in a week. Bye.